What is up everyone, Mark here. Welcome back to my channel, welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to be giving my review of Fall Out Boy's latest album, So Much for Stardust. This is genuinely an amazing new album, and one I was very impressed by. The way this is going to be structured is I'm going to have my pros and cons for the album, things I liked, things I didn't like so much. I'm going to be listing my favorite and least favorite songs, and then doing a final recap and rating. With that said, let us move on to my first pro, that this is a true return to form. Fall Out Boy has been on a very interesting trajectory since their hiatus way back in 2008. They came back with the album Save Rock and Roll, which I thought was amazing, and they had American Beauty, American Psycho, which was still pretty good, a lot more on the pop side of things, which I didn't like so much, but still not a bad album. Then we had Mania. Mania was so pop heavy. It was honestly so unlike the other stuff that they did before, and it didn't really feel like Fall Out Boy to me. In a lot of ways, it felt like they were trying to be more mainstream, or at least reach a wider audience than, you know, people who like punk and alt rock, and a lot of the songs just fell very flat for me. With that said, I was was very skeptical of what this album would sound like. When they first released the two singles, the first one I heard was Heartbreak Feel So Good, and that one was actually pretty impressive to me. Yes, it did have a lot of pop elements that I wasn't such a big fan of, it definitely could have been a song on Mania, but it was mostly very rock heavy. So I was immediately intrigued, I was like, okay, what is this next song gonna sound like? The song after that was Love From The Other Side, which is right now one of my favorite songs off the album by far. That song is the one that truly got me hyped for this album, truly felt like a return to form for Fall Out Boy. That was kind of what I wanted these past 10 years since the hiatus, a song that had all those heavy rock elements, but also was very different, very unique, and just felt authentic to Fall Out Boy as a band. And so after that, my expectations were very high for this album. And to be honest, I did not think my expectations would be met. Mania, for instance, was a big letdown, even though I liked some of their singles, and I was afraid this would be the same thing, and thankfully, no. The entire album, honestly, is a return to form for Fall Out Boy, except maybe Heartbreak Feels So Good. Everything else, totally sounds like something I would have heard pre-hiatus, and I think Patrick actually said in an interview that this album was sort of an experiment to see what Fall Out Boy would sound like if they never went on hiatus. It feels like the old Fall Out Boy has never left, and that is a great feeling. Again, that's not to say the last two albums were bad or anything, but they did not feel like the Fall Out Boy I grew up with, the Fall Out Boy I know and love, so it is honestly so great that Fall Out Boy has finally gone back to their roots, giving us an album that reminds me of something pre-hiatus, and an album that I probably will be listening to for a very long time. So with that said, let us move on to my first con for this album, and this is not really a typical con so much in that it's not really a con that I have, but it is something I noticed and a piece of criticism I can see being directed at this album, and that is that the album might rely a little bit too much on nostalgia. Do I think this album relies too much on nostalgia? Not quite. I think there are definitely a lot of elements of nostalgia that kind of do make me like this album and probably were designed to bring back older fans. Again, Patrick really did say that this was kind of supposed to be the album that they would have released if they never went on hiatus, so from the beginning, this album was going to be in some way relying on that old feeling of Fallout Boy, but even with the nostalgia factor, on its own, this is a fantastic album, and I don't feel like it relies too much on the old stuff. It's definitely trying to go for a very similar tone, a very similar atmosphere, but it doesn't do it in such a way that feels like it is copying their older stuff, or just trying to be a continuation of Folia Duh. So yes, nostalgia is a component of why I like the album, and kind of almost why it was made in the first place, but I don't think that is a huge deal for me, and it's not something I'm going to rank the album I'm lower for, and that does actually kind of lead us, funnily enough, into my next pro, which is making the old feel new. This album, yes, has a lot of elements of their older songs, but it doesn't feel like it is A, ripping those songs off, or B, giving us a straight-up continuation of Folia Da or Infinity on High. This is something totally different. This album is a paradox in a way, despite having all those elements from older songs, it does not feel dated at all. I think the only song off this album that probably does feel a bit dated is Heartbreak Feel So Good, and that's only because it has those pop elements that I think worked a little bit better in the late 2010s and just have not aged that well. But otherwise, all of these songs sound super new. And I'll get into this a bit more later in the video, but a lot of these songs take inspiration from older songs that aren't even from Fall Out Boy. Some of them take inspiration from songs from the 70s and 80s and still make that kind of music feel new and feel authentic to Fall Out Boy. I don't know how they did it, but somehow, like magic, they pulled it off and this just feels like a breath of fresh air. So with that, let us move on to my next pro, which is... Switching things up. No two songs on this album sound entirely the same, and each of them does something different. Like the orchestra in I'm My Own Muse, the strings and piano in So Much For Stardust, the softer vibe of Fake Out, the 70s disco kind of aesthetic of What A Time To Be Alive, and those two very interesting spoken word songs, if you can call them songs, that are sprinkled throughout the album. You don't quite know what to expect as you're listening, and that I like a lot. Now, whereas some albums do switch things up a lot to the point where it sounds jarring or the 
point where the album doesn't flow. This album flows very, very well. And as a matter of fact, those spoken word songs I just mentioned, you know, the one from Ethan Hawke and also the one by Pete Wentz, the way they're placed in the album is perfect. They really do feel like intermissions, places to kind of rest during the album, and they also provide amazing transitions to the songs which come after them. I honestly genuinely was not expecting those spoken word songs. I was like, okay, what is this? I thought it was one of the band members talking, and then I looked it up and it was Ethan Hawke. And then I was like, wait, what is he doing here? Apparently that song is actually a snippet from a movie he did back in 1994, which is a little random, but I think it's interesting. And I think the quote kind of does fit the theme of this album, at least lyrically. I'll put the lyrics on the screen now so you can see what they're really about. They are definitely very heavy. And to be honest, if you read the lyrics of a lot of these songs, they are either very metaphorical or very serious or even sometimes a little bit dark. And a lot of the times that is covered up by more upbeat, happy sounding songs, which I do like a lot. So we will get into that later as well. But just want to mention, so I really love the way this album does totally switch it up, never does the same thing twice. And it does that without sounding disjointed. Every song here sounds like it is a Fall Out Boy song. Every song here sounds like it belongs on this album. And every song here flows very nicely into the other. I actually like the way this was structured, the way they ordered this from beginning to end, and it really sounds like I'm going on a journey with this band. So with that, let us move on to my next pro, which is drawing inspiration. This album not only draws inspiration from, of course, the band's older work, but also inspiration from artists of the 70s and 80s. I always love when bands pay homage or take inspiration without, of course, sounding like copycats, and this is a perfect example of that. All the songs in this album sound so unique to Fall Out Boy, yet in many ways are musically inspired by artists that came before them. Now, if I had to choose one or two songs for this inspiration is most apparent, I would say for sure What a Time to Be Alive. That sounds very inspired by 70s disco and also So Good Right Now. So Good Right Now, I could honestly see like in an 80s rom-com. I could even imagine it in the 50s. If you're at like a 50s prom or something, definitely a song I can see in movie soundtracks. Both of these songs are very fun, very danceable. And like I said, they sound very unique to Fall Out Boy. They don't sound like ripoffs of other songs. They just sound like very inspired, but still unique songs from a band that I have loved for a very long time. So with that, let us move on to my next pro, which is the great lyrics. Now, I gotta say, after Mania, my expectations for lyrical content were pretty low. I mean, we all remember Stay Frosty Royal Milk Tea, which had some lyrics that I just want to forget. So let's say I was pleasantly surprised, no, very surprised, that this had some pretty deep lyrics. A lot of the songs here have some sort of meaning to them, even if they sound silly or not that serious. And when it comes to songs like So Good Right Now, the lyrics are actually pretty dark. Even songs like What a Time to Be Alive are fairly dialectical, which means they basically are kind of paradoxes. They sound really happy happy, but have lyrics that are more sad or more dark or serious. And that's something I like a lot. And if you listen closely to the lyrics in a lot of these songs, you start to see a pattern. And that really is that a lot of these songs are about finding light in the darkness. And there's some lyrics actually that specifically refer to that. I'll put some on the screen. Can't really think of them off the top of my head. I think the best example too is those spoken word songs. The Pink Seashell, for instance, is all about finding light in the darkness. These spoken word songs are honestly poetry, and there's probably even more meanings that I'm not picking up here. And funnily enough, Baby Annihilation is probably one of my favorite songs on this album, even though it's not an actual song, just because of how great the lyrics are and the story that it tells. Also, on that theme of finding light in the darkness, look no further than the opening track, Love from the Other Side, sending my love from the other side of the apocalypse. I mean, there is probably no better way to spell out finding light in the darkness than love surviving the apocalypse. And also that idea of an apocalypse is a pretty recurring theme in this album too. So I'm not sure if that is a reference to potentially current events or rather recent events or something like that, but that is something I also picked up on, which again is very much keeping in with this theme of light in the darkness, persevering through tough times. And I also imagine a lot of these lyrics are very personal to the band. I obviously don't know much about their personal lives, but a lot of these lyrics more than likely are about actual struggles that these guys have gone through. They are also, you know, getting older and have families. So life is definitely not as easy for them as it was 10, 20 years ago. And that does sort of come out in the lyrics too. A lot of it is definitely metaphorical, but there are some lyrics I'll put up here that do kind of allude to those sorts of struggles. This has way more depth and way more interesting lyrics than Mania does. So here huge points for that. And with that, let us move on to my final pro, which is the perfect bookend. This album has the perfect opener and the perfect closer. It starts off with one of my new favorite Fall Out Boy songs of all time, Love From The Other Side, and ends with So Much For Stardust, which kind of like Do It To Death, which was the closing song of Panic At The Disco's last album, mirrors the opening song. It has some of the same lyrics as the opening song, just sung a bit differently, a bit slower, and it feels like a true finale to this album. Also, So Much For Stardust is a song that I can genuinely see becoming a smash hit. The song sounds very radio friendly, but it also has that signature Fall Out Boy charm. And I love the use of piano and strings on the track. It is so well composed. And I also love that soaring outro. That is one of my favorite outros on this album. And I love the way it fades out in the end, giving us a bit of falling action as 
as the album drifts to a close. This album truly had one of the best intros and best outros I could have possibly asked for, and honestly when I listened to this for the first time, this looped from So Much For Stardust to Love From The Other Side, and I didn't even notice. I didn't notice until I was already on Heartbreak Feels So Good that I was like, wait, I am listening to this twice. It goes to show how much the album pulls you in, and the way it makes you want to listen to it again. So with that said, let's get into my favorite songs and least favorite songs on this album. Right now, probably just because it has had more time to grow on me than the other songs coming up next, is Love From The Other Side, and this song was one of the first I heard from the album, and the song that made me realize that this was going to be a return to form for Fall Out Boy, so it definitely holds a special place in my heart. I just love everything about it, the guitar riffs, the chorus, the lyrics. Another one I like a lot, that I almost like as much as this one, is Heaven, Iowa. This one really impressed me too, it has a melancholy atmosphere that I really appreciate, and it takes me on a journey the whole way through. The guitar here is great, Patrick's vocals are great, and everything really comes together to give us an amazing final crescendo, and honestly this is just one of the best produced, one of the best sung songs that Fall Out Boy has ever made in my opinion. From there, one of my other favorites is I Am My Own Muse. This song is very cinematic, and this song I really like a lot for that amazing orchestra. I mean, this song has an amazing instrumental. It also has this kind of dark aesthetic that I really like to it. Beyond that, my other favorite, as I mentioned, is So Much For Stardust, the perfect end to this album, and just a wonderful song. Again, I love the piano, I love the strings, and I can see these four songs honestly being smash hits if Fall Out Boy decides to put them on the radio or something, and are some of their best songs of all time, in my humble opinion. Do I think these are their best songs of all time? Not really, but these are definitely up there in my list, and I'm just so happy to be able to rank any of these songs that highly. So with that, let's talk about my least favorite songs. And to be honest, all of these songs I think are either good or great. So on the lower end of things are the songs that I think are just good. Of course, one of those I mentioned is Heartbreak Feels So Good. That song I think, of course, is good, but I find it a bit dated. I find that it could have been on Mania and would not have been out of place there. It is just a bit pop sounding for my taste, but still a song I'll listen to again. Another song that is on the lower end is So Good Right Now. The chorus is a bit repetitive and this song doesn't do as much as the other songs on this album. So that's the only reason why it is on the lower end of my list. And beyond that, I think the rest of the songs are amazing. I guess another one that I have a bit lower is Fake Out, only because it is one of the more subtle tracks and kind of took some time to grow on me. So if I had to rank all of these, I guess in the last place I would have Heartbreak Feel So Good, just because again, very pop sounding. For me, that will get an 8 out of 10. From there, So Good Right Now. Again, pretty repetitive, but still a song I like, just doesn't do as much for me as the other ones. 8.5 out of 10. Fake Out, this is a song that is very subtle and has some great soft vocals, so it has grown on me a little bit. Good song, I just want to listen to it more to really get a better sense of it. 9 out of 10. From there, I have What a Time to Be Alive. This one is pretty good. I love the 70s disco vibes, and I love that final high note. It really is a breath of fresh air on this album, but it also doesn't have as many rock elements as the other ones, and is probably the only song that you could kind of argue is a bit out of place here, but still great, and I love it a lot. 9 out of 10. From there, we have Flu Game. This is one of the more jazzy songs. This one just stood out to me so much, and I also love the outro. This really has a very bouncy chorus, and it is a song that I keep coming back to because it is honestly one of the most danceable Fall Out Boy songs we've gotten, and so for me, I want to give this a 9.5 out of 10. Definitely one I'm going to revisit a lot. From there is Hold Me Like a Grudge. I just saw the music video for this, and I loved it. This is a great song with some pretty good lyrics. The only thing is, it just doesn't stand out to me as much as the ones up next, and a part of that is the chorus doesn't have that much gravity to me, but still a great song, another one I like a lot, and one that also is on my playlist. So moving on from there, we have the Kintsugi Kid, or 10 Years, and it sounds like something I would have heard back in like the 80s, in a really good way. This is very well done, and that last guitar riff is so, so great. It has a bit of synth to it, and honestly just sounds incredible. This song definitely stands out a lot to me, and so for me, 9.5 out of 10. From there, of course, so much for Stardust. As I mentioned, love it so much. Great ending to the album, 10 out of 10. From there, I Am My Own Muse. The song has such a great atmosphere to it that I just can hardly even describe, and I also love the orchestra. This is one of the ones I've looped the most on re-listens, and for me gets a 10 out of 10. From there, Heaven, Iowa. What more can I say? This is incredible. Probably will become my favorite off the album with more listens. And of course, we'll get a 10 out of 10. From there, Love From The Other Side. This is a song that I have been streaming since it was released and definitely will continue to listen to for a very long time. 10 out of 10. And so that is kind of my ranking of all the songs, not including the spoken word songs. Again, if you can even call them that, just because I feel like it's not really fair to rank them with these more extended ones. But they are great too. I love Pete Wentz's Baby Annihilation. And I just think that they made this album so much more special than it already was. So with that, let's move on to my final thoughts and rating. So Fall Out Boy, in my opinion, has outdone themselves with this album. Every song here is really unique, really fun to listen to. Even the one I had in my last place, Heartbreak Feels So Good, is a song that I listen to a lot, one that I do enjoy, and a song that I definitely will continue to listen to for a while. I know that some people might see this as a desperate attempt to retain old fans, fans that might have turned away from the band after Mania, but for me, this feels like a band that really acknowledges 
acknowledges their roots and transformed that style of music and that charm into something totally new. In my opinion, this is one of the best Fall Out Boy albums of all time. Right now, I would say this is my favorite after their hiatus, which is saying something because I was a big fan of Save Rock and Roll. Just goes to show how great this album really is. Honestly, I could not find any huge critiques for this album. This is everything I could have asked for and more from this band. So if I had to give this song a rating out of 10, I would have to give it, and this is the first time I'm doing this for any of my album reviews, a 10 out of 10. What a masterpiece. So excited for what the band does next, and hopefully I'll have a chance to see them live soon. So with that, that has been my review. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this video. Let me know what you want to see next. Let me know if you enjoyed Fall Out Boy's new album. Let me know if you didn't enjoy Fall Out Boy's new album. Are you a fan of Fall Out Boy? Would you rather I stick to Eurovision videos? Let me know down in the comments. And with that, thank you all so much for 1,000 subscribers. It is a huge milestone for me, and I cannot thank you enough. Also, if you have not done so already, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to help support the channel, and also be sure to check out my Patreon. So with that, thank you all once again. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you all next time. Peace.